All right. Hey, Jen. One second. Resurrection is not limited to icons, but unlimited to the life of our souls. We have all walked the dark nights when we thought we were in the right, and we have all walked in the light when we thought there was none. Oneness is underestimated because it covers far more than peace, love, happiness, and the trappings of dogmas. Oneness is to understand that all of the dark nights hold the same face and that everyone's pain is equivalent when weighed against their singular life experience. Oneness is releasing every possession which really had been possessing us all along. The old family gripe so easy to blame on another, the religions and icons forced on ancestors at the price of land and freedoms forsaken. Government conspiracies and royalty belied of the dark demagoguery of foolish human pride. The chains and the stains, the shames and the blames, that even if we're true, serve no purpose but to hide us from ourselves and each other. Divinity is always becoming, always on time leading to the first and last, the end that begins, I am soul. How's it going, everybody? I'm going to pull up uh, our guest. Just one second. Here we go. Can you hear me? I'm going to send you a a message and it's going to say click video all right try that good to see you terry everybody else Ariana, try going out and coming back in. <clears throat> What's up, Gaia man? Paul Castaneda. 
Hello, Luis. Good to see you. Ariana, try to go out and come back in. Just close out your Zoom altogether. And then turn it back on and uh, go back to the link and click the link. <clears throat> Hello, Janice, Marilyn. All right, there she goes. She's going to go out and come back in. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to put this link on uh, Facebook because for the last month, uh, everybody's been getting knocked off. Yes, we are in California. We're in uh, actually Laguna Beach right now. Thank you, Eric and Jin Jin Reynolds. Thank you, Paul Castaneda, Gaia Man, for picking us up and taking us around. Annie Weberly. We're going to be heading over to uh, her place in, uh, tomorrow. Just making it up as we go. Right, let's see. She back. Hey, what's up, Puna? All right, let's see. We got, uh, let's, uh, there she is. Let me, let's try her again. There you go. See, it wasn't that hard. <laughs> Perfect. <Okay. laughs> we got it to work. Yeah, that's right. Technology see? working for us. We're be. only seven minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> Divine timing, divine yes. timing. Greetings Always. from the West Coast to the East Coast. Greetings, everyone. Greetings, mm -hmm. greetings, everyone. <clears throat> you know, it's um, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you for your continued love and support and contributions to Sology. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Todd. Thank you so much to you and thank you for having me on. It's truly an honor and a real privilege. I am so grateful, so grateful to you for all you do, for everybody who you put together, for your mission, for your purpose, for your walk in life, for showing us things, for teaching us things, for guiding us, for being the way shower and the one who walks the walk. You walk the walk. It's too many just talk the talk. You actually walk the walk and for real. And thank you for providing me this opportunity. I am eternally grateful and so happy to be here and to be of service, truly. Wow, thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I was having my bio read, but I can't really, uh, you know, from a place of humility, can't really. And of course I couldn't do anything because uh, I got somebody walking with me and there's no question Absolutely. About yeah, that I couldn't be doing it without her. Uh, so Absolutely. we do it together. It's, it's really both of us. Um, You're so lucky. You're both so lucky. <laughs> blessed. Each other, truly. Blessed. Yes, yeah, we are. Truly. We're very blessed. Very blessed yeah. in the 5D and the 3D. It looks like, uh, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> many so, more Ds, many things, many, many presentations, many experiences. Nothing is only one thing. Everything is many things of many purposes, seen and unseen across all the Ds. That's right. Timelines, times, up and down the stack. Yeah, yeah. it's a very multidimensional, amazing, magnificent, awesome universe and multiverses we live in. And yeah. Yeah. And it is a fun quote unquote time if you look at it from the timeline. Uh, outside of time, the other Ds, the other realms, foundational governing laws per of the realms. Oh yeah, it's both. And to yeah. living on the multidimensional, it is just awesome and it is so much fun. It is so much fun to surf it and not always easy, surfing the stuff, harmonizing them all together from here, the middle world and making sense of it all. A lot of it unseen, a lot of it what we do not see that's hidden from us for reason 
logical and illogical and many more things to purpose and none at all. It's all of the above and many things. Well, that's a mic drop. <laughs> 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 so one of the reasons uh, I'm excited about doing this because it was spontaneous, number one. Oh, yeah. And uh, number two is because there's many, many, many um, souls around the world like yourself, many of them, at least from what we can see so far, are divine feminine that have been connecting to this for a long, long time. And they're in the background. They support people. They support the energy in whatever way they can. <clears throat> but they also carry the same frequency of wisdom that you just displayed so that to me is why um this is exciting because i think mm -hmm. you know people say hey you need you and morgan need to interview this person and that person that's all great because they've got all these followers and this and that but i think it's really mm -hmm. the arianas of the world that in just talking about their experience um that actually can activate us more than than anyone anyone because well, that's just how I feel. So uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing You're space welcome. with us and honoring us with your presence. Thank and, you. Uh, we're just going to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. We got Franco Di Nicola on uh, in about an hour and 50 minutes. So we got plenty of time. Good. Good. Just good things to say to I knew so many people I am being introduced to through you, through Sology, people I've never heard of people who I uh, listen to and then friends I've made as well through you through 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 you really your your connector your way shore your um uh, reacher as you put in one of your profiles you are and so much more too you're a bridge to so much mm. and bringing so many together which is which really is essential because many of us feel we're the only ones and often we do not understand we feel we're the only ones and we live in the world where still too few have come to the point where we are and we live in a world where 7.7 .7 billion humans on the planet so even 7.7 .7 or 77 million is still a huge number on its own but a drop in a bucket and yeah. we have the human we have the paradigm we also have the in the ether part and the quote-unquote invisible part and so many things occur and we're still human too we also live the human experience for many reasons and it also means being human that we have the same foundational needs, wants, desires, wishes, lives to live for a hundred different reasons or none yeah. at all yeah. as any human. That means we want and need our tribe. We want the need support people like us who understand us to just be our tribe, our community. Yes, we're a small number and we're all way showers. We're here, we're points of light on this world, in this world. Uh, for many reasons, all multi-dimensional, multi-potential, multi-a lot of things. Um, and it's, I don't want to call it a multipolar world, but if you look at it as a multi-point aspect of who we are and what we do, the seen and the unseen, from our living room chairs doing some of the earth work, the grid work, whatever our talent and our skill is, from the human point, expressing here is saying you know speaking of this stuff relating our experiences as raw as it can get sometimes and it is not easy it is not easy at all and being and showing the way and sometimes we have to experience things for personal as well as for universal and multiversal purpose for the larger thing from the inside we came here for many reasons so us star seeds we have many roles and many reasons for being we don't know them all ourselves but yet we do we do it in conscious wake state we do it in sleep state we do many things all the time in a thousand ways 
and we also are here to live the human experience, to learn. It is a school and a playground for us too. Yeah. A soul experience, a soul journey. Like I said, everything is many things for many reasons, many forms and uh, yeah. Okay, well, this, this, this is the first because we have two mic drops in one episode. <laughs> 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 so let me ask you, uh, how did you get to where you're at? How did you get to the point where you see things and are so able to eloquently express them? Uh, what's actually happening? Because you pretty much summed it all up. We should end the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't end it so much more. To... <laughs> uh, how I got here? Good question, really. Um, we have only one mouth to say many things, which kind of complicates the 3D world. Um, <laughs> how I got here? Um, a very circuitous route, actually. I would say this, I'd say for the last, five and a half years, I've been in a cocoon, transforming. Transforming from caterpillar to butterfly and really to leap. Now, inner work never stops. There's always more. But you come a time when you're ready to really take the leap. So this is the perfect opportunity to do so. I have been doing a lot in the background, but it's also time to be front-facing to be the leader, the way shower, and just by being, by doing, letting others see the walk, the walk, and however you want to call it, to just be and let the others see that they have choice, that they have free will on this free will world by showing, by the positive alternative that, that people can just see and then just do emulate and go from there and become their own centers of light. So you asked me how I got here. Um, Five and a half years ago, everything changed. And uh, for the first three years, the first two years, it all went, everything blew apart, it came apart. I didn't even understand the crux of some of it for two years. And then in the course of the week, somebody, two people, completely separate walks of life said something. And then it came together that little key missing piece, it came together like, oh, all those things that I have been experiencing, seeing, coming together. Oh, that's what it is, yes. So then I completely turned and I left behind the route that I was pursuing that was not giving me anything positive. It was actually only doing negative. And I went a totally different work, route, which was the energetic side of the house. And for three years, I actually worked on that. I was connecting. I was doing the earth work. I was writing. I still do. But it was always in the background and always learning more, doing, flying the multiverses, exploring, using both brain and heart. I am perhaps a bit different from most star seeds in that I am the brainiac, the scientist. Um, many operate from heart, but I also operate from mind. Yeah. And it, I keep being told, you think too much. No, it actually is a pathway, it's a facilitator. It provides an opportunity. How did I get here? A lot of hard work and never giving up and flying blind far too many times. And yes, it has been hard. Um, sometimes it has been hell, but the road, but if you stick to your destination, if you stick to your goal, the road to the destination sometimes passes through hell. You yeah. get cinched, you drive out, you stay with it, you clean up the singes, and then you continue on to the destination and it is so, magnificent. So, I mean, <clears throat> just as an example, because, you know, there's a lot of people waking up. Yeah. And this, and you said this started with you five and a half years ago. I mean, I, I think, yeah. you know, now that the linear has been taken out, it really doesn't matter if it was five months ago, five exactly. years ago, 20 years ago. But like you talk about the uh, what's not easy. Um, can you just give us an example that you're comfortable with discussing? So people that are waking up now. Uh, 
might have an opportunity to understand that they're not going crazy or you know what I mean? I mean, can you give us an example of, of something you might have went through that might be able to help them through the experience that you had? Many things really. Uh, and how you perceive the world and the sensitivities that you feel. You are suddenly sensitive to energies of all kinds, to sounds, to all sorts of things. Uh, you, you become frequency-wise, in a way, incompatible with your environment. And that includes the ground, the human environment, the non-harmonic sounds that humans generate. Some intentional, I would say, but some pure ignorance. They just don't understand the power of sound. It's not like all these things are mysteries. They don't connect the dots. So yeah. you're affected by that and you react in a certain way. When you reach a certain frequency and vibration and begin operating from a multi D, be it 5D, 7D or whatever, you begin transforming in, in the light body, you begin operating that way. That means it becomes quite difficult sometimes to understand and operate in the linear world. Yeah. And for people who are just beginning, it goes way beyond the part of the family doesn't understand, the relatives don't understand, the general environment. You become intolerant of environmental things to levels that are not fully characterized or understood. You think differently. You think broader. Yeah. You no longer match with what you did before you no longer like what you used to like in some cases when it is drastic you completely become a totally different person you're not understood you don't understand yourself which is difficult when you're flying blind yourself and have no one to tell you you're not a nutcase you're, <laughs> a very, you're an empath you're connecting to the 5d the 60. when you're flying off to the multiverses you're doing it in your etheric self. We all have a soul. We all have a body. We all are multidimensional beings. We're cut off, we're shut off. And there's too much narrow and linearity. And you begin to feel some of the paradigm stuff that needs to change. Yeah. You feel for the planet. You feel for the animals. You attempt to express it. And the humans, the rest of the humans around you, they don't get it and they don't understand it. And the fear and self and and even many of the spirituals then tell you you are you think too much it is what it is wrong 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 yeah. and uh, you don't understand it you don't comprehend it and then there's another aspect because you become more aware more sensitive and more connected to the multiverses and you start to think you start to feel whatever your entry pathway is you start feeling for the tree, you start feeling for the public and you just want to be free and you just want to be yourself. And somebody tells you, no, you can't. And there's too much rigidity and too much absurdity in so much often fear-based. There's so many aspects and elements to this and you're lost and confused. And there is, there are, you need others to help you to tell you it's okay because you're still human and yeah. you have to have the freedom and the ability to integrate and to ask questions and to understand that you're not broken you're not flawed you're different and there's yeah. too much vertical there's this is so, a huge concept yeah. Todd. this is a huge concept very much and pretty much everything on the paradigm on the 3d earth no matter what it is is vertical it's vertical it's top down yeah you should do this it is this way the rule said it has always been done that way the parent the child the child is ignorant the parent knows best the rule says the government the doctor the this the that it doesn't even matter everything is vertical the assumption the imposition the expectation it is vertical it is narrow and everything operates on a very narrow so the straw approach yeah including things like stay in your lane, including things like mile deep and an inch wide. Not everybody's like that and everything is linear sequential. 
But I mean, what you really need to do is get to the horizontal. So yeah. much to tell you is wrong, flawed. You are wrong, you're flawed, get with the program, etc. No, it is different. Humans have created, and none of this is new. It's existed for always and always and always. This is just the latest version of. They tell you, somebody says, somebody says, it is that way. The book says, but nobody even knows the origin of this. And right. too much is the negative spin of the energies in the ether. If we, if we, but if we can get past that, yes, if we, way. we, we, we have become aware, we've become or aware have. of what's, well, let's just talk about, yeah, let's talk about right now, real time, okay. whoever's here, 49 people, me and you, okay. um, so we're aware now, yeah, the design that we probably, if not absolutely certainly, had a hand in designing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I guess what I'm saying is, is that how oneness is oneness. How do we affect change? You know, I mean, how, okay. how do we, yes. as an individual, affect change? And I just want to make one comment, too, about what you said, because it's kind of tricky. Because the ascension is a personal journey. Don't take anything personal. The ascension is all about to thine own self be true, self-empowerment. It's just you. Everything is you. But I love what you said because I think in this realm, if there's ever been an exception, it's here. And that is we don't need, have to have anyone. But there is something going on with the co-creation and collaboration and support. But not support in the old codependent way oh i love you so love me but there's interdependence some... interdependent so i mean what can we do as an individual each and every one of us as a common denominator what can yes. we do that will maximize the potential of our expansion internally and of course the consequences that we'll have on the external okay many pieces in what you said so the big how the big how look at it and live it and be it from the horizontal perspective different not better or worse not right or wrong different unique individual these are things that we all know we talk about it we say we do it it is living it it is doing the horizontal approaching it all from the horizontal perspective and acknowledging who you are, going from I am, going from I'm sovereign as a sovereignty, anything. And that is you then present an alternative. This applies to the internal within and how we live our daily human lives. It also applies to how we lead our lives in society to become the center point of the center the light for the next person and the others just by being by showing the way by being in positive and indifferent and making clear to ourselves and acknowledging and accepting it and to everyone around as we encounter it big or little it can be your next door person it can be your cat your dog it can be a group when you talk to it in a group setting in a classroom it doesn't matter on different, on horizontal, on legitimacy of them all, on equal validity. Yeah. I go back to an early concept that very little in our daily lives in society, and I'm keeping it to the earth plane right now because there's a whole lot more on that too, and the other Ds, uh, and it's all integrated. But on the earth plane, in the daily lives of our human selves, we live in a society where the assumption, the expectation, the energies really is all negative. If you really look at the horizontal plane, very little in our society is actually truly wrong that everybody, no matter how you look at it, will say this is wrong. 
a lot more, a whole lot more, everybody in whatever form will agree is a positive. The much larger majority, I would say 95% of everything else is individual, it's unique, it's different, and it's preference. Mm. If we operate by this paradigm, put it in our hearts, go from how we lead our lives, how we feel about ourselves, how we see the next person, the next anyone and anything from tree to cat to bird to whatever it is, as different from me. Heck, every single one of us is a unique individual, be it a person, be it a snowflake. Each one is unique. There never will be another exact. Even twins are very yeah. similar. Not 100% unique, not even a clone. Many things go into that, but just keep it to that for a moment. Keep it simple. If we operate on the perspective that we're all just different from the next person, from the next anything and unique, and none of it is greater or lesser, everything is legitimate. There's really very little that is actually wrong. Anything else is really choice, preference, and all the rest yeah. with equal value. Yeah. Then we go like that and we start within and we start walking the walk, talking the talk, and being the example being the example for ourselves and for anyone and anything that we interact with and given that the paradigm in play is a lot of vertical a lot of control a lot of judgment of right wrong better worse light dark male female that too all the rest what's better what's next and any kind of thing in life if we start saying the, and we think we live in a choice free world. We think we have choice. We think we have free will. But society doesn't allow that. Well, let's, let's, let's. Up, hold, on, yeah. hold on, hold on. This is yeah. key. The key to the how. The key to the how. Yeah. If you, the key to the how is there is one single version of it. And people just do it because often they don't know any other possibility or option, even if they would like to. So what we do, the how, is you present an alternate possibility of them to see, oh, I have a choice. There is another. You have no idea how. Most of the sleeping, and when people awaken, they're just going, What do I do now? Where do I go? What do I do? How different? I know there's something I don't even know how to get there from here. So, the getting there from here, you by doing, you present that alternate possibility. You, you be that. And it right? starts within you, be that. You live it. Yeah. You so start there... in your heart and you show it. You don't force it, you don't push it. You just do it. You are it. You be it. You, at the simplest, you treat the next person how you want to be treated, yeah. and all from the positive. <clears throat> all the stuff about fight, about confrontation, about meeting an undesired with another undesired, a fist. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Two undesired never, never give you a desire. You present the desire, and then a few will slowly come. They will start seeing, oh, yes. And given that humans have a herd, are a herd, like it or not, humans are a herd. That's not a judgment. It's not a negative or positive. It's a species characteristic deep down. We are a herd for we're not a snow leopard. We're not some of these animals who never see another one of their kind in their entire lives. We are a societal, a society, a herd, and we are interdependent. So, I, uh, I, I get, yeah, I absolutely agree with that. I love that you brought that up. If we start doing that by being that point of light, if we have that undesired, let's not meet it with another undesired, a fight, a protest, a confrontation. I don't like this, or I'm going to do fist stuff. No, you simply say, you say, you present, you do the desire that you want. You meet, you change by offering a desired possibility. Then you let, you put it out there in big or little. You let others go. 
be their own independent self, think for themselves, feel Make them for think. themselves, what do I want for myself? And then they will go toward that desired once they know they have a choice. And then something else I talked about heard. There is this gray human thing. There is this safety in numbers and a lot of fear. So once they, you have one, and then you have two, and then you have three, all those fence sitters, those who are afraid to shift to that desired, which in their heart they want, but are just afraid of being ostracized and all this human abandonment stuff and all the stuff because humans are still humans. We have those foundational needs. They will start seeing the safety in the, now it's a group of 10 or of a hundred. And they will start coming over seeing, I have safety in numbers here. I have another group, another tribe, another way of thinking. Nobody forces them. They yeah. will come over and feel that safety in deep inside that it is okay and yeah. they will start jumping up from the fence and coming over and leaving behind that undesired you simply provide an alternate possibility and let it be by being it living it and that is all okay and yeah. then you help each other get there you hold out the hand and you do it positive you don't do it on the negatives. That is how you really affect change that holds, that is solid, that grounds, and that is root, that roots. Because people have brains, people have hearts. So much of the society is, I don't like this. I don't want this. Everything is don't and negative. You put out there a desire. Everybody yearns for desire for a better, nobody knows what that is out there. Well, yeah. here on earth in the middle world, you present it and say, here's another option. No, you have a brain, you choose, you have choice, you have free will. You don't force it, let them come. Yeah, you be that option. Let, I want to go through a few comments here. So sure. let, me go, let me go through them and then I'm going to uh, come up with something to okay. uh, project to you so you can give us your uh, perception. Okay. Uh, this is from... Amadian, thank you for the comment. Thanks, Jenny. Sometimes it's so overwhelming, the sadness without reason, when everything is great. Uh, Aaron Lee, I got to admit, I still don't know how, trying so hard. Mm -hmm. Bo, Bo Indigo says, are we really so different outside of a 3D reality? Ooh. Uh, a couple more comments here, but there was one I saw on here that uh, take responsibility, Rebecca Newell. Uh, let's see, where is that comment? Uh, Aaron Lee, then what if nobody listens still? Question marks. Um, let's see if there's anything else I can pick up on. There's a lot of them coming in. Thank you for all your comments. So, you know, I, I love what you're saying. It's very fluid. It's very easy to understand. And as we know, everything's moving really, really fast, really mm -hmm. fast. Yes. So fast that those we look at today that we think are asleep could be more the, more awake than us tomorrow, because oh, the inf absolutely. information doesn't require. Uh, if you went through something over six months, I might be able to do it in six minutes. And yes, I listened to a, a really great conversation last night with Morgan and somebody, that, uh, a guy that just walked up to us as we were sitting on the uh, sitting on the street out here on Laguna Beach late at night. He just walked up to us, started talking. And it went into everything is energy. And you said that earlier. I mean, yes, this realm has a certain characteristic. Back to, I think it was Bo Indigo that says, are we really that much different outside of 3D? Maybe that's where we start. Maybe we start to understand that, no, we're not. The only difference is, is the movie that's playing in this realm that's had this power over us, which we thought we had to, fight but we really don't um this is all our thing here we created this thing and uh and it's beyond a cliche new ageism we actually can transform from the center of the universe which is us and all this rhetoric and debate and fear mongering and programming that's being continued out of the babe's mouths basically me included we know what we know. Uh, can, can we 
Is there a tool that you have? Can we get past all that and just stop the rhetoric and stop talking about it and just be that? Is that it? Just you, Ariana being you, Todd being Todd? There are many pieces to what you say, Todd, and it is all very multidimensional. And I can go on for hours on each and every <laughs> one of these. And I'm trying to keep it, you know, simple, concise. And if you, you know, wish, if, if you, I'd be honored to, to take apart any single one of these topics and just run with it because it's, there's so well, much more. Well, let's do, the, let's do this one because uh, I, I, I mean, okay. it fascinates. Oh, yes. It fascinates me that you woke up, well, by your own description, five and a half years ago. And so many of the people that I know that I've talked to and, and uh, befriended or whatever talk about the transformation. You know, there was the, oh, my God, what the hell is going on? The expanded awareness of the lies that we bought as truth, the conditioning and all that. Then mm -hmm. the expanded awareness, oh, my God, I am a god. I am goddess, I am all of this stuff to uh, converting that somehow, transforming that somehow, because it does involve the body and it most certainly does involve the human psyche, the human brain, the human patterns, the human behaviors. Was there a way that you on a personal level were able to navigate that, were able to move aside or eradicate these illusions and move into your power because there seems to be like this lag or this lapse in between okay i've identified the shadow i moved it out of the way i know light's going to come in but then the human's trying to figure out how the hell do i do this which is what you were saying earlier you know and in and engage that power and uh, actualize that power was there a, was there anything that stands out on your journey where you were able to transform in the moment by a certain technique or process or whatever? I've been doing most of it really on the fly. It just comes, it shows up. Um, honestly, I'm not exactly sure how to answer this question in a linear form because I don't think I've figured a lot of this out. Now, what I have been able to do what I have been able to do is recognize what Earth is, what human is, what dimensions are, um, and many multidimensionality thing, and that, okay. Um, where do I start? I guess I'll throw a few things out and see what catches on and captures on. And then maybe different people will find this one or that one more useful than the next. I don't know. I would love to hear that. So a couple things that have truly helped. We all, uh, let's see which one we start. So the first thing that has always helped me which I have found huge amounts of resistance and lack of understanding is that even awakened people are still, and then really some of the really connected ones yeah. keep saying the most important aspect of self, they don't even call it aspect of self, is the human. But actually, I've always disagreed with that. We are the human physical us, the ones we are seeing on the image right now on the Zoom. We're also soul. We also have a spirit. We perhaps have other energetic aspects of ourselves that are within us. Look at it as an analogy of a vehicle. Vehicle, passengers in the car, who's driving at the moment? If you have three, four, five humans in a car, in a vehicle, well, let's say let's say let's say piece. let's say three or four or five or more aspects available to drive the car i love where you're where you're going with this let's say that now i love what you okay. said about about the human and you know i say the human is the hero yeah okay. but i know There's we're going to say it, but but here we go so what i'm getting at is this all right one of the things that you talked about early on in the show was basically uh i still got to be human 
you know, I got all this stuff coming in and, and all that. Mm -hmm. And I get this and you get it in a very, uh, you know, like I said, you're, you're very eloquent about the Thank way you, you explain it. So my thing is this, but you still got to do the human thing. You said that. Yes. So, so my yeah. thing is, okay, if we're in the car uh -huh. and we have all these multidimensional aspects and yes. they're growing every day, our abilities yes. are growing every day. Yes. The human's still in that car. Yes. Now, the human now is the so on one, but I was going to say, on one hand, the human's a car itself because that's the the vessel. The vessel. I'm just, this is my analogy. But on the other hand, unless it's almost more like a horse, unless that vehicle, that horse, that car, that human, whatever, isn't wants to, it ain't going to happen. So, so to answer your answer your question, but also if you could elaborate on what is the human? How special or irrelevant is it? Okay, so to the vehicle, the car, I look at the vehicle as this body you're in. You're I'll just run with this and, and uh, bear with me for a second, Todd, on this. You are the vehicle of self, which means the vessel. Consider the vessel, the physical body of you, yeah. as the analogy of a car. But within you, a part of you, there's the human you. Yeah. There is your soul. There is your spirit and any other energetic energies from different frequencies, dimensions, living within you. They make up the complement of you in this world named Todd, in this life. If your physical vessel, your body peters out after whatever number of years, and then your reincarnated rebirth your soul will be in a different car in a different vessel there'll be some change some energetic different you'll have the i'll get to that in a bit so right here now today you todd i ariana every single person listening to us every cat every dog everything every other being is a vessel composed of and this is all energies frequencies from dimensions which make up the complement of who you, as in the entire stack, the entire stream of you. So what happens when we navigate and shift? We live the human's life, the aspect of self. So we go out and have to do our food shopping, okay? So the human has to get in your, you know, go down to the store and buy your stuff. It's the human doing that. But... Then you're going off either in sleep state or wake state and doing some channeling, doing some bringing in, doing something like that, connecting to the universe, doing your grid work, your earth work from the spot you're sitting in right now. Who's driving there? That's your soul, your spirit, the energetic, the 5D, the 60, the 70 aspect, the whatever Ds you go to, whoever it is you are, they, that aspect is on the lead, is on point. I agree. I agree. Seat yeah. Driving. Your human <laughs> is sitting in the next seat, in the back seat, sitting there watching, taking a nap. Doesn't matter. There's another but, but, driver but, driving but there the seem, car. But there seems to be a difference. Okay. Okay. Because we've all had our moments, our epiphanies, revelations, divine episodes. Yeah. But one thing about, and we can put all the labels we want on it, uh, galactic uh, incarnations, uh, divine essences that comprise us, uh, higher self, soul, spirit, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, that has come in and told us something or moved us to do something and yes. basically possessed us. But I'm going to just speak for myself, but I think I can speak for most everybody here, but not in perpetuity. No. Now, hang on. So the difference is, and I'm just trying to expand here. The difference is the human can jump in that driver's seat anytime it wants. 
And and I don't see, and I'm talking about not just any time at once, but for an extended period of time, whether it's conscious or not. I'm going to do this, period. I'm going to do this. I'm getting in the car and I'm driving. And I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is the human becoming part of, in a non-physical, etherical, esoteric, I don't know what the word is, uh, part of the soul, spirit, and all that other stuff that we're not even privy to. All of our we always minds. are. We always are. We all have, always have been. We're a, an integral complement of multi-dimensional energies, frequencies, aspects of what we call the self. Yeah. And each and every one is different. Yeah. Each and every one, seen and unseen. This gets to be a little bit esoteric on the multi D. It's all right. Each dimension has its own foundational governing laws. But why are we but, but, but why are we conscious here? 99.99% of the time, and I know you know I'm being extreme, I'm just being metaphoric, but mm -hmm. why are we conscious here? There's got to be, I would think, now I could be wrong, there has got to be a significance to the evolution and expansion, not of the physical human being, but of the energy that is the human being. There's got to be something going on, or why would we be conscious so much of the time here? And even if we were conscious of the multidimensionality, and many are, because I live with mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. you were one. I am all the time. But mm -hmm. yes, but we still have to function down here. Yes. So there yes. must be some extreme level of importance to this ascension and maybe the word is transformation maybe the word is transformation or graduation or coronation i don't know but there's got to be it just seems to me there's got to be something absolutely unique in this time and space extraordinary about the human because as as the human is part of the universe and all uh -huh. these things that you've brought up soul spirit and all that they're all part of us. So we're driving this car and we can push a button and pull. If we are aligned and conscious, we can put spirit in charge, soul in charge, galactic in charge, depending on whatever we're doing. Right. I mean, so it works both ways. The human. It works. It works all the way up and down the stack, as I call it. Yeah. And the key, the trickiest part is to harmonize to harmonize the entire stack across the multi Ds and yeah. have a seamless integration of the energies to have a smooth flow. Very tricky, very hard because it is a lot more complex than it actually looks. And as we stand in that- Because each and then I'll get to the center point us here on earth in a second uh, to answer the, the direct question. I'll get to this. Uh, spot in a, in a second. The tricky part is to harmonize the smooth flow because each and every one of these aspects of us, these members of the complement called us, Todd, yours, me, mine, etc. We all operate, each dimension has its own different foundational governing principles of the realm of the dimension. Okay, Here, well, well, let me let me take let, let me, physics and relativity. No, no, let me take that in. Hang on, that, that was, plus that was plus powerful. And, and all that. Okay, so that's no, that was that was example. that was powerful. Let me take that in for a second. Okay, hang on. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> whoa, Nelly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is real. I mean, it's true. I just never thought about it. So, each one of our aspects for lack of a better word, is governed by the timeless time, spaceless space they're in, the dimension they're in, the timeline they're in. Okay, granted, the human's no different. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's an element of power over, you know, or giving up your power in other dimensions, I guess, to whatever, whatever. But my point is this, going back to what is the human. So if that's the case, uh, in 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 this consciousness that we're 99.9% uh -huh. 
that we've got to be in. Let's put it that way. We've got to be in it. We are here. We can be out there. We can be here and unconscious. We can be out there and conscious in all of our multidimensionality. But the bottom line is we still have to function. We still have to be a human. Yes. So, so give me. So, so what? So. But I was going to ask you this question. So, of all of our aspects, yeah, all the aspects that we have as we stand here in this time and place, uh-huh. is there not an aspect of us? that has more influence and more necessity than the human? The general consensus thus far, and this is really old paradigm and on its way out, is when people say, perhaps because they're sitting here, perhaps because a lot more stuff is opening as a veils drop, the timelines integrate, the great big merge, I'll get to the center point earth, center point human, and all that in a second, the middle world aspects, I'll get to this, I really, really, that's really key to talk about it, or tell you, know, it's just, I think, I think that's, that's another show right there, because I can already tell, exactly, but, that's but another anyway, show, so that. back to, to that, yeah, but, but yeah, this back, multidimensional, yeah. this multidimensional aspect of us, so the foundational governing laws of the universe, each dimension has its own. We're multidimensional beings and creatures and we navigate and by quantum, this is quantum 101, Schrodinger's cat and all the rest. We can be in both and in all. The tricky part is harmonizing the open aware multidimensional without giving more or less weight okay. or importance to oh. any one of the Okay, 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 okay. okay. Still okay, live okay. in each realm as we're all an independent being. I, I got it, but I got it. But we okay. don't have we don't have full recall and recollection, uh, recollection of all these other things. So back to this is a better way to put it. When it comes, because we're we're 99.99% conscious right here. So when it comes to what we all have in common that we can all consciously say, I'm mm-hmm. going through this, you're going through that, yeah. we're all in the same boat. Yeah. What aspect do we have that has more influence as we stand and what we can consciously say we share and prove? Okay. Hang on. That what aspect has more influence on that harmonization than the human and all of its composition? Okay. We as the humans are we as the humans are here in the myrtle world as a center point if you look at it i agree as an hourglass so there's a lot more in the hourglass but i'll keep it at hourglass center point us right here in the 3d realm in the density and the intensity Mm. of the physical world everything else is like an hourglass going up or uh, <laughs> it's sort of like it goes up and expands but that is it's it's like a v if you want to look at it with less density across the realms i don't want to get too techy or convoluted on this your uh, to, to keep it simple to keep it simple right now so what can we do here in the middle world and why are we here and how can we work some of this garbage that we have picked up on eons that haunts us that is exactly why we're here among many other reasons so for those of us center point earth center point human this density this intensity is essential because us this is really really huge people wonder what do i do now i have all this garbage to clear out how do i offload i have all this emotional weight that's that's blocked me from this separate from i don't know what society tries to impose this is the own stuff the personal the heart walls the trapped emotions the all the stuff from this life past life eon soul stream <coughs> genetic or <coughs> bloodline familial lineage and all that you ask yourself why isn't this stuff clearable or healable the part that is not school the part is not that is not lasting yeah clear between lives by the spirit doctors out there because it cannot because you need the density yeah. the intensity like a glass to do it out of. if you as a human make that choice free will to do that your own body 
can be that glass to do those processes and clear the stuff up. It is irrelevant where it originated. Yeah. A lot of it's like a chain link. Yeah. You clear it up from in here because you are holding that Where? ground floor to clear it up. So we can all do that, clear up, resolve our garbage accumulated across eons to be free of that, to offload the baggage that is blocking us, trapping us, keeping us, repeating the same thing over and over and over again and we think we get past it and it is back again and again, and again. <laughs> i had one society, come this morning <laughs> i had one come last tell us, time. oh you're wrong yeah. you're flawed you're this just get over it and all this other stuff so, it doesn't work that way because it you have to run all the stuff to source point origin and right, the right. only way to truly be free of it is be completely open to whatever it is and wherever it originates now this is probably something most have not heard it doesn't matter in what life what dimension what species whether it is yours and current life bloodline soul stream because the way the physics of this whole thing works is your soul cycles through physical bodies and physical lives for lots of reasons your familial lineage also it is perhaps in the junk dna perhaps someplace out what they call junk yeah that's where it all is yeah silliness but anyway it is all in codes it is little energetic matrices and those things stick and they follow you across the entire streams so, so the removal to remove but to remove those, because we're running out yes. of time. We're running out of oh, time. Okay. I, I totally get this. We need to spend hours doing this. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we need to have many things so, to talk but, about. But but uh -huh. because we're really, you know, we try to break it down, you know, you know that. I try to break it down here yeah. to what we're feeling in this moment, to what we're experiencing in this moment, uh -huh. which is why I kept going back to the questions of okay, we've got all this stuff going on, we've got the car we're driving down yeah. the road. Uh, but when it comes to this harmonization, when it comes to driving this car, the human has a say. The human has a say in it, and must have a say in it. And, yeah. and, and as far as I can tell, conscious at a conscious level, has to because if it doesn't, uh, it's going to keep going the way it was. I mean, they're, they're, anyway, what I'm trying to the say: human, is, the human can make the conscious choice yeah. to tackle what is what needs chat tackling to change the human okay so the fears the shadows mind and yeah. heart the fear and the shadows to make the choice to do it stick with it you asked me yeah. earlier what kept you going how did you do because no matter how hard how ugly how difficult it was how much you know you want to throw in the towel sometimes you always come around and you say, I want this, my choice, and I will not let anyone, anything get in my path. And that comes, and that, and that, to be that, afraid to tackle whatever it is, yeah. whatever role I played, whatever I did, I will, nothing is in, everything is up for review and address at human, at any life, at human level at soul stream at whatever and since you are also tied to the bloodline familial energetic stuff through your dna and the soul stream you can make that choice to clear out that entire stream yeah and no matter where it is and unless you decide to commit and go and the only way to truly be free of however big or how little whatever the it is that you need to work on you have to treat it as your little weed in the yard if you just clip off okay the okay okay well you those, you i gotta slow you down. i gotta i if got you, to slow you have to get to that root yeah. and root it out and take care of it from there i gotta slow you down because you're, you're going right past me <laughs> sorry i tend to do that i tend to just go Whoa. yeah no 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 but but because i i get what you're saying i want to restate it so and maybe it's just for me and everybody else gets it go right ahead go no, right no no ahead. i got it no no we're out of time that's why i was trying to move through it um 
God, you you said so much. I would I would encourage everybody to go back and listen to this uh, last hour. Um, but the uh, what I heard at the end, you know, of course I'm I'm with somebody four years who is a shadow eater. All right, and it's taught me that we're not light workers, we're shadow workers. Um, but it, it sounded to me like what you were saying, and I'm going to try to put all this together in one final question or one final statement, and you can add to it. But it sounded to me like what you were saying is, forget about the multidimensionality. Uh, hear me out. Forget about the past lies. Forget about the traumas. Forget about all this stuff, okay? Because the bottom line is, is there's one way that is the most effective and efficient way to progress with ease and grace and speed. And that is to remove those weeds and not judge where do they come from? Was it from when I got molested? Was it from my ex-spouse? Was it from my childhood? Was it from my father, or my mother? Was it from my boss? Was it from a past life? Am I doing this for the collective? It doesn't fucking matter. What matters is, is that the weeds are there. And if you just pull the weeds, then all the thinking gets taken out of it. I mean, did I, I know I speak, you know, my street vernacular, but yes. does that, does that sum up what you were saying at the end? What you actually have to do is not root out the weeds. You root, you run it down to the root. You pull out the root yeah. and then the weeds will go. The weeds will not grow and regrow so when an energetic similar comes your way and you get triggered or you have a similar experience it won't affect it won't go in and there's so much more if we had more time it could but it but it but it doesn't matter but it doesn't matter but it doesn't matter in the human interpretation as we, we, we always want to know, no, no. It doesn't matter where the weeds came from. I'm saying the it same thing. It doesn't matter. No, I'm saying the same thing. Matter. I'm saying you pull the weed, you, the weed you root, root the weed out. And, and if you can take out the, the um, you know, the dialogue, the, the back and forth of where did it come from and how do you find it? And just exactly. know there is a weed. Let's pull it out from the root energetically and move on our way. Right? Exactly. Two very key aspects of this, and this is this is probably something new that too many people are still focused on in process of two very essential things. One, you need to run it down to the root, wherever that is, just completely, and you don't need to know all the specific details. You need to run the stream down to source point origin. It doesn't matter where or what. The second thing is too much focus is still and this is essential to do this quickly, faster in six days versus six years or 60 years. There's still too much emphasis on the familial lineage. We have gotten past the self yeah. part. We then focus on all your bloodline. There's still some very good people out there who are still doing the bloodline stream. What you're actually doing, and then that's all gone, but the stuff still haunts you. That's because there is more than the bloodline. The bloodline, you have the familial stream, yeah, you yeah. Have the soul stream, but 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 the soul but, stream and it integrates. Souls have cycled through many familial lines, yeah. souls have picked up stuff along the way. It is encoded in the soul aspect of stuff, it's still an energetic pattern. So if you completely wipe away of where did it come from, stop concentrating yes. on the familial stream, you can do in three years what others take 30 that or you could do you could do in three hours you could do it. you could do in three hours so i just want to conclude it with that yeah. you're saying the same thing uh we're it doesn't matter i'm not right i mean it's not like that but what we're saying here what's coming out of this energy that we're all sharing that everybody's uh -huh. a part of is that it doesn't matter where i'm going to use the best terms i can it doesn't matter where the shadow came from it doesn't matter if it came in this incarnation. It doesn't matter if it came in another. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. All that matters is to know it's there and root it out. That's it. And then you move yes. on. And the story's gone and, and, and the labels are gone. And the 
Uh, mm, what am I trying to say? The uh, preference for uh, this lifetime or that that lifetime, or I'm downloading Mother Mary or Kuan Yin, or all that stuff mm-hmm. becomes irrelevant. We are human beings. You're Ariana. I'm Todd. We're doing this work in this realm. We're conscious most of the time here. Even if we're not, even if we're up in the ethers, we still have to function here. It's all being converged and integrated. And and I love what I'm pulling away from this because the rule of the road here for me is it doesn't matter where it came from. If it doesn't matter if I'm doing it for you, the collective, myself, a past life, just root it out and move on. Right? That's what you you're saying. Do it. From right here, so to yeah. sum it all up, to circle this back together, um, to be really clear on, on how I view this thing, um, it doesn't matter where it originates. Yeah. We are here in the middle world where we, conscious human us, can make that choice yeah. to deal with all of it, take care of it, be completely blind to what role we played, where it originates, or whatever, whose it is, some of it isn't even ours, we just happen to be sitting in a toxic pool, and it, you know, we get, you know, it it affects, it it carries through. We take care of all of this, we clear it up, or truly free, not just at the weed, we go to the root of it, and then the rest will go on its own. When I talk about three years or 30, Three hours might be one aspect or a few. We have, at least some of us, have huge amounts of garbage that cannot in the physical linear world be done at three. The human body itself as a 3D uh, com- uh, 3D being cannot do it all. We're not in the etheric. We're here in the physical realm universe. So anyway, three years, yes because there are many aspects. And when this is all done, there needs to be integration time. There are a couple yeah. other aspects to this. Once that matrix is gone, that space needs to be filled in the universe. Every space needs to be filled with something. The what? That's something else. So you root out the root and the whole bunch of heavy, energetic, undesired, and it's gone, transmuted to the light. Uh, s- sent to its component parts and a portion of whatever its next purpose is and all the rest. But what are you going to fill it? You set the intent of the desire that you want to fill it with. You become the point of light, the desire you change. What do you want? Yeah. You now created that space. You go from there. And, and when, I am uh, willing to talk more about this, clarify, yeah. expand more on any of these pieces at some future time you said Absolutely. you had to go. Dad. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Todd. It's yes, awesome. absolutely. And uh, and let me just add too that when we pull that root out, be sure and bless it, kiss it, love it, and integrate it into and your heart because it served its purpose and expanded you. Yes. And therefore expanded your brothers and sisters. It's a beautiful experience. It was spontaneous, intuitive, creative, imaginative, a little bit courageous. <laughs> and we'll do it again. <laughs> Definitely do it again sometime. Thank you. And then and. Uh, I hope to get out to uh, D.C. and see you. Uh, that would be great. We're going to be back in 45 minutes with uh, Franco Di Nicola. And that ought to be interesting. I think this is our uh, fifth show we're doing together. And uh, that ought to be interesting. Thank you, Arya. Thank you, Todd. Love and blessings to you. Infinite gratitude. And loving blessings to everyone listening to this. Past, mm-hmm. present. Well, not really past. Present and future. So thank you, Todd. Lots of love, love, blessing, good.